Hello, hello, hello. How does this work? This crazy bird, which is a machine, a thermodynamic machine. It keeps going and the energy has to come from somewhere. I want you to Google drinking bird and you will find the entire explanation online. It's quite subtle and incredibly innovative by the person or the people who invented this drinking bird. There are two glass spheres. You see one here on top. There's the beak, which is a metal mouth, but it is surrounded by cloth. The head is also surrounded by cloth. And then inside the bottom is a liquid ether that can very easily evaporate. In other words, it has a very high vapor pressure at room temperature. So now you have to explain why this liquid goes upwards and upwards such that the head will be heavier than the tail and then the head will dip into the water. Well, as I said, I'll be lazy. Uh, there is really no need for me to go into detail because it's all online. But it is a marvel, truly a marvel. I had this already when I was in high school. <laughs> when I was the university, I had three of them in my room. Right now, the one that you saw when I posted the problem, I have here in my house. Buy one, they're cheap and they are great fun. Have a nice day, take care, and I hope you're not angry at me that I let you do some work to find the solution. And I imagine that many of you already found the solution online anyhow. So now comes the more exciting part. And that is, will this thermodynamic engine work outside at three degrees centigrade? Let's put it outside and then wait 10 minutes maybe and then see whether it still works. You ready for that? So the drinking bird has now been outside for about 15 minutes. It's oscillating a little bit because there is wind here. But it's no longer an engine. It's no longer dipping in the water. Now maybe you think that I should start it by pushing the head in the water so that it gets wet again. That's entirely reasonable. So let me do that. Three degrees centigrade here. Um, it is clearly not working. At room temperature, it worked. Clearly, if the 
temperature here was not 3 degrees centigrade, but 20 degrees centigrade, it would work. So that tells you that it is a heat engine. And I will now tell you in a little bit more detail a little bit more of the physics. I hope we all agree. that the engine has stopped. If it wobbled a little, it's because of the wind. You see, the liquid is not coming up. The liquid is colored red. And it has to come up in order to make the head heavier than the bottom so that it starts to go all the way like this. All right, so clearly it's not working at three degrees centigrade outside. That's a given. So let's now be as precise as we possibly can. You see here again the picture that I showed you earlier. The liquid is ether and you see that liquid here and it's in the bottom sphere. In here is of course the vapor pressure of the ether. And when we start it, if, if the head were at room temperature, then the vapor pressure would be here, the vapor pressure of the ether at room temperature. So we have around here cloth, some velvet-like cloth, and this is a metal mouth. So now we make that cloth wet. We just put it in the water. By, you, you do it. You put it in the water. And now you let it swing. And as it swings, there's wind created by the movement. And thus, some of that water will evaporate. Evaporation takes energy. That means the cloth will cool. And also the immediate environment around the cloth. But what counts is that the cloth will cool as wind evaporates some of the water and that means that the temperature in here will go down. Lower than the vapor pressure, than the vapor pressure of the liquid at room temperature which is here. So now there is a differential pressure between here and there the pressure is lower here than it is there because the temperature is lower here than there. And so the vapor pressure here, which is higher, is pushing this up until there is so much liquid here. Remember, it is done in this position. There is so much liquid here that the head becomes heavier than the bottom. And when that happens, it goes this way, because it pivots around this point. As long as this is heavier than that, then it will go, try to go in this direction. But now there is more liquid here than there, so it will go in this direction. But as that happens, as we will see very shortly, it is so cleverly designed 
that when this liquid reaches a certain level in the head, this opens up and the liquid can flow back. At this position here, you will see in the next part that the liquid runs back. Well, that means now the lower part is heavier again than the top part. And so, it goes back up again. But, since it pivots, it will move. And in this position, the beak hits the water, gets wet again. And so now when it goes this way, some of that water will evaporate and the top will cool again. So the clever design is such that because of the motion, it gets colder here than there, just the, vap the vapor pressure here is lower than there, that's why the liquid goes up. When the liquid goes up, this gets heavier than this, so it goes in this position. Then it hits the water, so it gets, a land it gets again wet. And at that position, very cleverly, the liquid runs back. And the whole process then goes on and on and on. Now, put it outside at 3 degrees centigrade, then the vapor pressure of the liquid, which is the vapor pressure here, is very, very low at 3 degrees centigrade. And when you make the, the head wet and you oscillate the head, that head never gets much colder than 3 degrees centigrade. And therefore, there is no longer a substantial differential pressure. And so it won't go anymore. Key is that there is a sufficient temperature difference between here and there. And that difference is not high enough when the whole thing is at 3 degrees centigrade. You cannot cool this enough so that the differential pressure will push the liquid up. And that's why it stopped. <laughs> yeah. So it's a heat engine and should not work outside at 3 degrees centigrade. But if it's outside 20 degrees centigrade, it would be perfectly fine. There would be no problem. That's my room temperature. <laughs> All right. So, it's now inside again. And working well. So, the source of energy <laughs> is the heat in the room. And of course, if you did it outside at 20 degrees centigrade, it would be heat of the sun. <laughs> now look, look closely at the red liquid. When it dips in, the red liquid runs back to the bottom. That's because of the clever design. You see? So now, the top cools. There's a differential pressure. The bottom pressure is higher than the top. Liquid is being pushed in the head and then the, it dips because the head is heavier and then the liquid runs back. That's the clever part of it, you see, and it starts all over. So it's a heat engine and the energy source is my heating system in the house. All right then, well, have a nice day and take care and I'm sure you now want to be friends with me because originally I wasn't going to explain this in great detail. I wanted you to do the work but I finally decided since I added the second question that I would give it more time. All right then, so yes, yes of course, therefore we will be friends. And that's always true, and that will hold forever and ever and ever.